Good afternoon, friends. I'm Rita Pasi, all the way from Kuwait, the Middle East. I'm, uh, uh, to, to begin with, I'd like to tell you that I'm really feeling really proud and honored to be a part of this setup, to be a part of Parenting 2.0, and I'm so glad that I've found lifelong friends here. I would like to share my real lifetime experiences with you, which not only inspired me to transform myself, but also gave me a great insight into the grand scheme of things. My daughter got married in 2011, and within a month of her marriage, she announced her pregnancy. She was, of course, very happy about the prospect of becoming a mommy. My husband's first reaction, sweetheart, I haven't even paid your wedding bills yet. <laughs> During her first uh, ultrasound, you know, I accompanied her to the hospital. I was standing outside, and uh, within no time, I, I hear an excited yell from inside, Mom, come and have a look at the baby. It's a baby already. I went inside. I looked at the monitor. I just couldn't see any, anything there, nothing at all. So I said, where's the baby? So the doctor leans forward, and she says, uh, do you see that uh, black spot in that corner? <laughs> Yes, I did see a black spot, four, uh, one mm by one mm in size. I said, is that the baby? No, 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 come closer. There is a tiny white dot right in the middle of that side. <laughs> <laughs> I was wonderstruck. You know, when my children had been born, there were no ultrasounds. So one had no idea about the growth of the baby in the womb. I'm that ancient. <laughs> I looked at the dot, and then my daughter, you know, like I, you know, thought that does everybody start a life as a dot? How about Albert Einstein, Michelangelo, Galileo, Madame Curie, Mother Teresa? From a dot to such geniuses, all those great philosophers, scholars, explorers, scientists, those who made such a mark in this world and gave such giant leaps to evolution, started their journey as a dot. I came back home totally mesmerized by the incredible journey of a dot. A few questions arose in my mind. If a little dot has a power and potential to grow into a complete human being with all his systems, faculties, emotions, reactions in place, why won't it have the capability and capacity to reach his own niche in life? What would stop it from carving out his own future? Should we as parents uh, support and help our children's inherent, inborn preferences and choices and make his journey to his niche comfortable or take it upon ourselves to choose the future course of his life, consequently stress ourselves and him, trying to keep him on the track? At this time, my, men my mind went back to my childhood. I had the most wonderful parents in the world anybody can dream of. But in their opinion, it was their duty and responsibility to plan out, to decide on our future. They were unable to think that our preferences and choices and our, uh, uh, the things that interested us also mattered and should be taken into consideration. So this was the situation at that time. When I was growing up, I was quite bright in my studies, and my parents decided that I should go for India's most prestigious Indian foreign services, and nothing short of that, and make them proud one day. For my uh, you know, graduation and master's, the subject that was chosen for me was political science honors, because they felt that it will not only make me familiar with the political affairs worldwide, but also be so helpful when I join Indian foreign services. At this point of time, an uncle of mine, seeing my compassion for children and uh, you know, seeing that I was very emotional and creative, suggested to my father that he should get me a degree in education, I should take up teaching and grow in that field. My father laughed at him. He said, what do you mean, my daughter a teacher? Don't even talk about it. There was tremendous pressure on me, you know. Firstly, this subject was not akin to my temperament at all. And secondly, I had to struggle to keep up to my parents' expectations, you know. And, but I had no choice. I trudged along. Now, as if God sent to intervene in their designs, a tall, handsome, 
captain from the horse cavalry of the Indian Army, comes into my life. <laughs> a prince charming, <laughs> a prince charming straight out of Mills and Boone and Barbara Cartland books I grew up on. I'm completely bowled over, totally swept off my feet. He likes me, we start dating, and during one of our conversations, I tell him very proudly that, look, I'm, I'm appearing for IFS exams. But to my surprise, he doesn't seem pleased. He, he goes thoughtful. I said, what went wrong with you? He says, look, uh, I, I like you, I want to marry you and make home with you, but do you realize if you go that way, we will never be t uh, together at the same station. We'll always be posted at different stations. I think it's not a good idea, drop it. And I was so smitten that without thinking twice, I tossed back all the books into the closet and my parents' aspirations along with them. <laughs> uh, we get married, had two children in quick succession. Um, we are a happy family, everything is going very fine, good social life, you know, good friends we made around, but there's something missing. There's some growing restlessness in me. I feel impatient to do something worthwhile in life. And when my second daughter also was school going, I started looking for some professional options, suiting a mother of two, a wife of a demanding husband, who is not only demanding, but is also moving from one station to another every two to three years. And we have to follow lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Lo and behold, the only option available to me is teaching. <laughs> Life comes a full circle. My woes don't end there. I don't have a degree in education to take up a job as a teacher. So I go back to the university to do two years degree in education. But this time, the story is different. When the result is declared, I find my name right on the top of the list. I had topped the university. What an amazing uh, beginning to my new journey, my own passion of life. There's no dearth of offers after that. I choose the best school in Delhi. Then I, I grow from strength to strength. I'm a known name in education circles. They select me and send me on deputation to Kuwait, where I lived for 20 years as an educationist and uh, touched the life of so many children before taking voluntary retirement to open my own company, Novel Era. The mission of which is to support uh, parents raise wonderful future generations so that we can have a better world to live. So I feel my uh, husband came into my life to get to my niche. That is, uh, you know, help children grow confident, compassionate, and well-rounded individuals. And my granddaughter's entry into my life to awaken my uh, you know, passion to make the parents aware about their children's abilities, power, potential, and also to make them realize that they should empower them in life skills rather than stressing themselves and making their life miserable and the children's too. I would like to leave uh, some food for thought for all of you here. Um, in my opinion, every child is born unique. And every child is struggling to be unique. But we all try all means to make him look like others around us. Here's a conflict here. I would repeat, a child is struggling to be unique, but we are trying every means possible for us to try to make him look like anybody around us. So I'd like to say that, you know, we should resolve this conflict. We should let the child keep his uniqueness. We should listen to his little voice. And um, to summarize, I can say that uh, enjoy your children, give them the best memories, let them carry back. When they, when they go, it won't be long before they go away from your nest. But when you're leaving your uh, uh, when they're leaving your nest, let them carry an album of colorful pictures of their childhood, each one telling a story and bringing a smile to their lips. Thank you. <laughs>